Hi. Now, if you have a YouTube channel, you get asked a lot of questions. Every day I'm dealing with one or two questions. If I was to try and analyze which is the most frequently asked question, it is why am I not getting sharp pictures, especially with birds in flight? Now this applies to any brand of camera, but because I use the OM-1 camera, I get more viewers on my channel using OM-1 cameras than, than others. So it's often very specifically about the OM-1 and sometimes even with exactly the same lens as me, the 150 to 400 mil. And I'm sure the people asking the question are very frustrated that they're not getting sharp pictures as often as they would like to. I'm actually very frustrated because I can't give them a good answer. Why aren't they getting sharp pictures? The OM-1 is a fantastic camera for tracking birds with its bird detection. The 150 to 400 mil lens that I've got is optically perfect, as is the 300 mil f4. So I'm always a bit puzzled as to why people aren't getting really sharp pictures quite easily. Now, when they ask me the question, I always suspect that the answer they want is that somewhere in the menu there's a setting and they haven't got that setting right. And if only I could tell them that in set three, page five, line two, if they set that to on or off, they would start to get better pictures. That's the answer they're looking for. Unfortunately, it's very unlikely to be true. And to try and demonstrate that, I've come to Gigrin Farm in Mid Wales today, which is the Red Kite feeding station. And at 10 minutes to 3, I am going to do a factory reset on my OM-1. That puts all the settings back to how they were when I first took the camera out of the box. And 10 minutes after that factory reset, the tractor comes into the field, delivering all the food for the kites, and I've now just got 10 minutes to get all of those menus set up correctly for birds in flight. You'll be amazed how few settings you really have to change, especially when it comes to the autofocus. Now Gigrin Farm is the best of the red kite feeding stations from a photography point of view and they've got a variety of hides, some very low hides over that way. This is the tower hide, so you're right up in the air. There's some slightly lower hides and then other hides for the more general public to their left as well. August is not going to be the best time of year. In the winter there'll just be hundreds of them coming in. But there should be enough for me to be able to test out that I've got all the settings right. It's 14 minutes to at the moment, another four minutes, then I'll do the factory reset. If the weather's good, you don't have to go in the hides, you can sit out in the sunshine. So here we go. So it's underneath the spanner tool, reset, initialize settings. We want to initialize all settings and then just a confirmation message. And that's it. The camera's back to how it was when it came out of the box. If I press the ISO button on the back of the camera, that's the standard setting it comes with. I'm going to change that to 1600. That's my default ISO setting. I'm also going to make sure the top dial is on aperture priority because that's my normal setting. And that's it. We now delve into the menus, starting off with set one. Well, I'm a raw shooter, so I've got to change that. It defaults to large, fine JPEG. I want raw. The world of wildlife photography is divided about 50-50. Half of us shoot raw, the other half shoot JPEG. Whatever your preference. If you shoot JPEG, you've got to start setting up some of these other options. I don't need to do that. The only other thing on this page I would change is image review, but it defaults to off anyway. But I would, I would always want that off. Anyway, that defaults are off, so onto the second page. Again, because I'm shooting RAW, I can change all these afterwards. If you're shooting JPEG, there's one or two you might need to change. Nothing to do with autofocus, however. Onto the next page. ISO step. That's the only one I would change on that page. I just want that in one step increments. I'm not interested in changing the ISO in one third of a stops. Page four, I would keep the exposure compensation in one third increments. That's what I do normally. Page five, metering mode, always have it on the matrix or evaluative. So I can leave everything there as, as it already is. 
Flash, we're not interested in drive mode. Yes, this is one we do have to change. And we're going to shoot at SH2, which is the 50 frames per second. When I'm doing birds in flight, I want it to be as fast as possible. We'll just check here that SH2 is set to 50 frames per second, which it is. So there's nothing else on that page. Page 8, image stabilizer. I'll just leave it that default i'm quite happy with that now on to set two there'll be even less that we have to change here so second page third page nothing to change so on to set three which is autofocus now this is where you think you'd have to change a lot of settings but we won't be first of all we need continuous focus but do we want continuous focus or continuous focus with tracking if you read the manual it's far from clear and I tested it extensively and could actually see no difference between the two. But in conversations I've had with OM cameras, the recommendation if you're using bird detection, then you should be on continuous focus. Apparently the algorithms are slightly in favour of just continuous focus. So that's what we're going to set it to. The only other setting on this page I would change is the release priority at the bottom. It's not vital. But if that is set to on, the camera will take pictures, even if the picture is not quite sharp. And I don't want the camera making a decision as to whether the picture is sharp or not, especially at the beginning of a sequence when it hasn't acquired focus yet. I want to make that decision afterwards, and I'm happy to have to delete a few pictures that aren't quite there. Page 2 of the autofocus settings, and here we do have a vital one, subject detection. That has to be set, and it has to be set to bird. And that's it. That's the most important of all of them. On page 3 of the autofocus we have continuous autofocus sensitivity on the top line. Before bird detection I always used to keep this on minus 2. But since bird detection I don't worry about it. Minus 2 means it's most sticky on the autofocus. It sticks to the subjects it's already on rather than swapping to a new subject. But I find that bird detection is so good it just doesn't jump onto a new subject anyway. And the amount of times I'm going to get one bird flying in front of another per year is so few that I just don't worry about it. And when it does happen, do I want it to go onto the new bird or stay on the old bird? You can't make that decision in advance. So it's a setting I just leave on default today. Movie autofocus settings not relevant. Page 5, I wouldn't change any of that for today. Same for page 6. There's some of those features I might change later, but just for today to do these birds in flight, not necessary. And then we have the video settings, we can skip all that. Then the playback settings, we can skip all that. To the cogwheel, and there's not going to be any settings here that's going to affect the autofocus. I'll just see if there's any that will really irritate me if I don't change them. There are a few of these settings I might change later, but there's nothing here that's vital for birds in flight. Now we're onto the wrench tool. I'll change the DPI. I always keep that at 300 DPI. It's not really going to affect us. Again, I can do it during the raw processing. It doesn't really matter. Oh, here's one that irritates me. The sound. I have to have the sound off. I can't stand the camera bleeping at me all the time. And we're almost at the end here. I'm very confident there's nothing else that I've got to change. Page 6, and that's the end. I easily did that within the 10 minutes, and in fact if I hadn't had to talk about it, I could have done it in half of that time as well. Just in summary, the main things we set up in order to ensure we're going to get sharp pictures of these kites in flight were continuous focus, bird detection on and that's really it I did check we got release priority set to on but it does that by default anyway and we changed the frames per second to SH2 which is 50 frames per second that means you're getting the maximum images that you can have with continuous focus and you get all the different wing positions so that's helpful it didn't come up in those menus, but I would have all focusing points active. If I'm ever doing birds in flight, I have all the focusing points active. And shutter speed, 2,500th of a second, is a good starting point for birds in flight. 
The month of August is not the best time to visit Gigrin Farm. They feed them at three o'clock when the sun is still rather high in the sky. Six o'clock in the evening would suit me better. In the winter they feed them at two o'clock and the sun never gets that high anyway. Also in August the birds can be a bit tatty with a number of wing feathers missing and there's nowhere near so many birds as there are in the winter. But it gave me that opportunity to show that you don't have to change that many settings to get sharp pictures of birds in flight. The success rate was very high. The few pictures that were out of focus were usually at the beginning of a sequence where the autofocus hadn't been acquired yet. Sharp pictures of the birds against the sky like this is a relatively easy test. It's far more challenging for the autofocus when the birds are swooping down to the grass. With the bird detection on, it doesn't get distracted when it goes against the trees. And this is even more difficult with the bird coming towards you, but there was very few times when it didn't get this right. What I've tried to illustrate is just how few settings there are in the menus that are really important for getting pictures of birds sharp in flight. It's very unlikely that you haven't got something set up correctly. In my next two weeks worth of YouTube films, I'm going to go through most of the menu settings on an OM-1 camera. Thanks for watching.